Climate Week NYC kicks off this weekend. The event brings together international business and government leaders to showcase global climate action. Follows a summer of record-breaking heat, scientists have linked to climate change. And now, the debate over the environment taking center stage on the campaign trail, raising some tough questions within the Republican Party. Joining us now with more NBC News correspondent, NBC News Now anchor, our good friend Morgan Radford. Good morning, Morgan. Hey there, Willie. Really. Good morning. So this is really interesting because we heard this on the Republican primary debate stage and polling shows this overall. Republicans less likely to see climate change as a threat compared to their Democratic counterparts. In fact, one progressive group counted 139 members of Congress who refused to acknowledge the scientific evidence of human-caused climate change. But for young voters across party lines, climate is a top issue which is why some young conservatives are now trying to get older members of their party to get on board or risk losing their vote. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, whoa, whoa. is a That's hoax. Ridiculous. It's a campaign trail talking point we've heard before. Environmentalists talk about all this nonsense. Republican presidential primary candidates casting doubt or diminishing the effects of man-made climate change. I've always rejected the politicization uh, of the weather. But there's a growing political faction that's pushing back, and it's coming from inside the Republican Party. Are you both conservative? Yes. yes. Are you both registered Republicans? Yes. yes. Students Alexander Diaz and Ava Sherwood are members of the American Conservation Coalition, a group with more than 20,000 members focused on environmental protection through what it calls limited government and market-based values. The discourse surrounding the climate and energy altogether has really been taken over by the left and the left is their whole discourse is filled with alarmism and people don't want like doomism. And I think we need to be optimistic about um, different climate solutions. I think that's where the, the disconnect really is. So are you saying the Republicans care as much about the environment as Democrats? You just disagree on how you care for the environment. I think a lot of young Republicans do care just as much as those on the left do about this issue. We just really fall apart when it comes to the fact that like our conservatism is going to kind of take precedence and we're going to be hesitant to expand the size of government. So the way you solve it is through states and local governments. Absolutely. And the free, and the uh, market based approaches. Their fears that the Republican Party doesn't care about climate change. In fact, so Diaz spoke to the concerns week, uh, of many young of conservatives at the last primary debate. What has the response been like? Uh, the response has been kind of big. I think it started an important debate in the Republican Party as well as kind of in this campaign specifically um, in that, you know, young people do care about this issue. What happens if, if Republicans, for example, don't speak to younger voters in a language they understand about climate change? I think that you run the risk of losing a lot of young voters, which are just becoming a bigger and bigger section of the electorate. You risk losing them if you're not able to at least speak to a way that they can uh, understand what your positions are on energy and the environment and the climate at large. And the polls agree. The most recent Gallup poll shows 70 percent of young Republicans worry either a great deal or a fair amount about the environment. And 44 percent of those young Republicans say we're already seeing the effects of global warming, compared to just 29 percent of older Republicans over 55. It's a trend Republican pollsters like Jim Hobart say the candidates are seeing, too. You are certainly seeing the shift, but I also think it's important to see that, that it's a slow shift. I think for a Republican candidate, especially if they're running in a general election, the best thing to do is to focus on, hey, look, we need to continue to have oil and gas be a meaningful part, and even coal, oil, gas, and coal, a meaningful part of our energy portfolio. But it also makes sense to be looking at some of these alternative sources like wind and solar. Like that, especially in Europe. An approach that can be harder to find on the campaign trail. Are you hearing Republican candidates talk about this stuff, about climate change, about the environment? Are, are you hearing that? I don't think we're hearing enough. And what happens if older generations of Republicans don't get on board? I think we're seeing more and more how Republicans are struggling win elections. Like we saw in the midterms, we saw a historic youth turnout, and they broke for Democrats by about 30 points. That red wave that never happened, a lot of that has to do with young people voting for Democrats on issues like climate change. And so more and more older Republicans are having to grapple with this fact that if they want to stay electorally relevant for younger generations, they have to do something about this issue. A changing political environment in a changing climate.
So it's interesting when you drill down into specific policies, you can start to see the ways that this movement could start having an impact beyond the next election and really outlast this election cycle. In fact, another recent Pew poll found more than half of all Republicans supported some kind of tax on carbon emissions and 64% supported tougher restrictions on carbon emissions from power plants. So to put that 64% sort of in larger context and perspective, that's the same level of support among Republicans for presidential candidate Donald Trump. I guess the question, Morgan, is because there are issues like gay marriage, there are climate change, guns. These kids have grown up in an era of school shootings. Are the older politicians hearing them? Are they listening? You know, they're saying that they're listening, but they're not necessarily repackaging and regurgitating that information in the language and the ways that these young people understand it. And these young people, they're sharp and they're ready to see some change. Yeah, do, we saw it there. Do Republicans recognize the fact that the temperature, when it goes up to 95, you know, in February, it affects everyone, not just Democrats? I, 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 you know, what's interesting, we actually asked about some of the Biden administration policies, and we said, are you giving the Biden administration credit for some of the things that we've seen? And they said, look, we, we see some of the changes changes that are beneficial to the environment, but what they're really against is this big government notion. They're saying there's so much federal backlog when it comes to the red tape to getting these policies pushed through, and they say that forces people to go to places like China, which arguably has resources that aren't as good for the environment. They want the free market to, to handle the problem. So interesting. NBC's Morgan Radford, thanks so much. Great to see you.